In the icy depths of the Atlantic lies the Titanic, a symbol of human ingenuity and tragic failure. As her steel is slowly devoured by an invisible enemy, her legacy fades piece by piece. Will the Titanic still be lying on the ocean floor in the years to come? Join us as we step into the depths and uncover the story behind her slowly fading existence. April 15th, 1912. The unsinkable ship lies broken beneath the freezing Atlantic. For over a century, the RMS Titanic has rested in silence, slowly vanishing. And perhaps the most iconic part, the forward railing where Rose and Jack stood in the movie is still there. But not for long. Experts warn that it may only survive a few more years before rust and bacteria consume it completely. Yet, the Titanic is more than a wreck. It's a symbol of ambition, luxury, class divide, and tragedy. From Hollywood films to museums, it has haunted the collective imagination for generations. There are few shipwrecks that stir such global fascination. The Titanic is not just history, it's mythology. In 2023, a deep sea expedition captured the first full-scale 3D scan of the Titanic, revealing the wreck with stunning clarity. But that detail came at a cost. The scans showed alarming decay. Metal collapsing, decks folding inward. The Titanic is being devoured, not by time, but by a living organism. A bacteria named Halomonas titanicae is turning her steel into brittle rust. It clings to the ship like vines, creating what researchers call rusticles, fragile, hollow, and crumbling. Halomonas titanicae is a halophilic or salt-loving bacterium discovered in 2010 by researchers studying the rusticles growing on the Titanic. It belongs to the Halomonidaceae family, a group of extremophilic microbes often found in harsh environments, salty lakes, deep sea vents, and shipwrecks. What makes this bacterium unique isn't just where it lives, it's what it eats. Unlike most organisms that rely on organic carbon, Halomonas titanicae can survive by breaking down iron and steel. Within these biofilms, Halomonas titanicae releases chemicals that oxidize the iron in the ship's steel. It clings to the metal surfaces of the Titanic and forms biofilms, slimy microbial layers that act like communities. It transforms solid metal into a fragile reddish-brown material we call rust. This is a process known as biocorrosion or microbiomally influenced corrosion. And Halomonas titanicae is very good at it. Most life struggles under the intense pressure and cold of the deep sea, but Halomonas titanicae thrives. It's psychrotolerant, meaning it can survive in extremely cold conditions. It's also anaerobic capable, able to survive with little or no oxygen by using iron or nitrates instead of oxygen to drive its metabolism. In fact, its ability to survive without oxygen is one reason it's thriving on the Titanic, where oxygen levels are low due to isolation and depth. It even possesses enzymes that protect it from heavy metals and high salinity, making it a master of harsh environments. The discovery of Halomonas titanicae has far-reaching implications. Not only does it explain why the Titanic is deteriorating faster than expected, it opens doors to entirely new fields of research. Scientists are studying how these bacteria might help in bioremediation, using microbes to clean up oil spills, shipwrecks, and even nuclear waste. They could also help us protect offshore structures like oil rigs, submarines, and pipelines from microbial corrosion. And beyond Earth, 
Some scientists believe similar bacteria could exist on icy, salty moons like Europa or Enceladus, where conditions may mirror the Titanic's deep sea environment. If the process continues, scientists believe that by 2050, the Titanic will be gone. In the same expedition, a long-lost mystery was finally solved. A massive piece of the Titanic, the bow section. It was discovered hundreds of yards away from the main rack. Its twisted metal confirms a more violent breakup than we ever imagined. What else still lies hidden, far from the cameras? But reaching the Titanic is no small feat. The wreck lies at a depth of nearly 13,000 feet. Temperatures hover just above freezing. The pressure is over 375 times that at the surface. Very few submarines on Earth can even survive the journey, let alone explore or film it. Every visit requires millions in funding, custom-built vehicles, and teams of expert navigators and scientists. It's not just dangerous. It's a race against time and decay. The Titanic is not just a shipwreck. It's a frozen moment in history, a graveyard, a warning. But with every dive, every scan, we disturb her resting place further. Light, sound, and human curiosity are speeding up her final collapse. We're racing against time, not just to preserve what's left, but to witness it one last time. Scattered across the sea floor are the last traces of lives lost. A pair of leather shoes, still side by side. These are not just artifacts, they are silent voices. Each object tells a story of someone boarding a ship with hope, never reaching their destination. But should we keep visiting this graveyard beneath the waves? Some believe our deep sea exploration is disturbing a sacred place. Others argue that we must document and preserve what we can before it's gone forever. There's no easy answer. The Titanic rests between memory and mystery, between what we know and what we may never understand. But even if the wreck disappears, Will it ever truly be lost? Thanks to modern scanning, virtual reality, and 3D modeling, the Titanic may continue to exist, not in steel, but in data, preserved in servers and headsets, walkable, viewable, experienceable, long after the ocean claims the last of her remains, a digital ghost floating in memory. The ocean hides more than it reveals. Today, the Titanic fades. Tomorrow, something else will rise from the deep. Subscribe to Archive of the Deep and join us on the next descent into the stories waiting just beneath the waves.